Napoleon spent his days on horseback, exploring Elba's meager resources. Often he climbed to his favorite spot on the island, a mountain looking out across the Mediterranean. There, he would spend hours gazing toward Corsica. His connections to the past had been severed. When he learned that Josephine had died at Malmaison, he did not leave his room for two days. As the weeks passed, Napoleon grew bored playing at Emperor of Elba. He never took his eye off France, where the Allies had made the mistake of restoring an eager but weak Bourbon king to the throne. King Louis XVIII had neither Napoleon's charm or charisma. France had a constitutional monarchy now but with royalists threatening to abolish the gains of the revolution and the economy floundering, the king soon became unpopular. For 10 months, Napoleon watched and waited. Then on February 26, 1815, he slipped off of Elba with a handful of soldiers and eluded British and French warships. After making a mistake or suffering a misfortune, he said, the man of genius always gets back on his feet. Once ashore, only the king's army would stand between Napoleon and Paris. Six days after landing in France, he confronted a regiment of infantry ordered to bar his way. Napoleon advanced alone to meet them. Soldiers, he cried, if there is one among you who wants to kill his general, his emperor, here I am. Suddenly the soldiers began cheering wildly. Long live the emperor, long live the emperor. Two weeks later, Napoleon was in the French capital and Louis XVIII had fled. The news hit Europe like a bombshell. The devil, his enemies said, has been unchained. 